Hello everyone and welcome to another War Leader PvMP video. I'm your host. <laughs> now I am back. Today I've got 1v1s to show you. Uh, not a whole lot of them. They tend to drag on a lot so this is going to be a long one. This is pretty much because of the state of stuff in Rohan as it is right now. Guys that are seeking 1v1s, well, the free side ones, are the guys that are the classes that are very powerful right now. So you see rune keepers, you see wardens, you see some champions, you see a couple of hunters, the hunters that are really good and were doing well before, uh, and some burglars as well. But that's really about it. An occasional lore master. Other than that, it's difficult to find a lot of variety. So what you see is what you get. Uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, for these videos, I have standard traits set up. So check out video number 50, the Welcome to Rohan one, if you need to know what that is. And uh, Audacity, you can see that on your screen now as a caption. Anywho, let's get started. Okay, so first off is Gould. And uh, Gould is someone that I haven't fought a whole lot. I've fought him, I think, uh, two, three times, but those were in Isengard. And uh, those times didn't go so well. I, I, I have one recorded one, which was a very, very laggy endeavor. And so th the times that I did manage to fight him, he, he's managed to kill me in the past. This is Rohan, though. I have a stun now, and uh, really, war leaders getting a stun just means that the, the fight versus hunters is so one-sided that it's not even funny. Between the healing, being able to stun, and then I, I just put down damage, uh, dropping both banners at once, all the all this kind of stuff, uh, he really just doesn't have the, the kind of tool set that he needs to actually effectively fight a war leader. And that's a problem of design for the developers. I mean, Gould, he knows how to play his hunter very well. I, I'm not particularly a fan of this particular hunter just because of other stuff, but, you know, I'm perfectly willing to admit he plays his hunter very well. The other thing I do like is he does... He makes use of the ambush tactics, which you don't see hunters do enough of, is the, the kind of ambush stuff that spiders like to do when they go soloing, or they burrow and they wait for prey to come by. You don't see enough hunters try to go into camo and wait for their prey to come by. Sadly, it doesn't work for him here, and i uh, finished off. Alright, here is Nimue. Uh, Nim is my first Runekeeper fight of the expansion. Uh, she starts off with crowd control, uh, and as you can see, it cuts off my shield bash animation, so I don't didn't get her stunned. I do get her stunned right there. Now, what I'm going for is a DPS burst. There went a second CC already. And uh, I'm going to try to take her down with a, a Brawler Stance attack, attack, attack based strategy. Uh, she's hitting very, very hard with those crits. As you can, I, I saw a 2,600. There went 4,100. Uh, so really hard hitting from Rune Keepers, uh, even in these early stages of the expansion without raid level jewelry and all that kind of stuff. And uh, probably she doesn't even have the level 85 audacity gear yet. But still, they hit ridiculously hard. That's just Rune Keepers for you, what can you say? As, as you can see, just a ton of damage just coming out of here. And uh, the Brawler Stance, it really doesn't have the healing levels needed to withstand this. Uh, honestly, I should go ahead and get into Commander Stance to properly fight this. I did go ahead and get a w hit for 1,000 there, so you know, I can get some pretty decent crits too. Not quite to the same magnitude, but they are possible. There, I, I got a nice big heal crit off of Quitters Never Win. Uh, but there went the, the big issue, and that was Rune Keeper healing just went off and uh, undid quite a bit of the damage I've done. Uh, now I'm standing in the middle of a big debuff area, uh, the two purple icons that are on the bar right there, and I didn't even notice it. Really not the place to be standing. I did get a decent hit off there. But again, Rune Keeper healing just goes right off. And uh, this is just something I, I'm not really a fan of, is Rune Keepers are able to heal quite a bit while in full DPS mode, which, you know, they've given it to all of the healing classes. They can do damage and heal at the same time. War leaders to a less extent, lesser extent, just because they don't do damage rapidly. And Defilers, of course, you know, they really just don't hit hard, no matter what. Uh, war leaders do better in terms of just raw DPS, if you don't factor in damage reflect. Um, with the damage reflect, uh, Defilers can sometimes do better. I am ridiculously low. Finally I've gotten to Commander Stance. Uh, this is what you need to be doing to, to stay alive against Runekeeper. Now, this is one of the greatest changes from Isengard for the War Leader Runekeeper matchup, and that is the fact that you can once again 
stand in commander stance and actually tank a runekeeper's damage. This is something you haven't been able to do since Mirkwood. Ever since the <laughs> the end of Mirkwood and such, runekeepers have just hit too hard, had too many tools in their dis at their disposal. This just hasn't been a viable strategy. Now, one thing to remember is that I do have the point defense down, so I've got additional defenses on top of everything else. I just dropped Banner of Terror right there, so that's a, a going to be a nice blow to her power levels and her damage output. Uh, but she just hit full morale right there. Stuns me once again. And uh, the other problem that I have is I'm also really, really low on power, and that's that's something else that the Brawler Burst strategy really does, is it loses up a lot of power, especially because of that whole shield bash. It will sap you quick, and that, that causes problems. But uh, the Runekeeper also not doing too hot on the power, but that's only really because of the Banner of Terror. Uh, without the Banner of Terror, the power level's uh, sustainability for this Runekeeper is uh, really very good. Uh, there I just took a hit for just a, a little bit under 3,000, like 50 under 3,000. That's a Runekeeper Power Restore. It's a little bit delayed, but uh, it's going to pop up pretty shortly. There we go, about 600-ish power just popped right back up. And, uh, you know, that helps. Uh, it's not a huge power return, which is something I can be grateful for, but it still is there. And uh, here, this is uh, something else about the Runekeepers. As you can see, 60 power doesn't slow down this spam of abilities. Runekeepers and power problems, yeah, they don't really have them. Yeah, they can get low on power and all that stuff, but it doesn't prevent them from using abilities. They don't have to slow down their ability use. They just pick different ones, and they, they pick their very spammable one. It's just a design problem, and one I'm not really happy with. I mean, it's the way things are right now. And there we go, I get finished off because of some nasty crits, and because I failed to manage power properly. Uh, now here is a Warden, and this is Synthry. He was actually a, a pretty decent Warden on the server. Let's see, he made rank 9. Let, let me think about this. I think he made rank 9. I want to say back in Isengard, uh, but it might have been Mirkwood. It, it was close to one of... It was very close to the beginning of Isengard and a Mirkwood area. I think it was Mirkwood. Uh, anyway, this is my second Warden fight. Uh, the first one took place with uh, three blue outposts and the outnumbered buff on the Warden, so that one really didn't go anywhere. Uh, this time, I've got a, a solid strategy for trying to fight him. My strategy is going to be sap his power bar. Now, my plan of attack for the power bar is twofold. Number one, Banner of Terror. Banner of Terror is going to be great for, number one, sapping a bunch of will. Chunk of power gone right off the bat when you deploy it initially. Uh, number two, and more importantly, is a nice big hit to their regeneration rates, including the hit just from losing a whole bunch of will. Now, by itself, the Banner of Terror d is not going to run them out of power. It's because the Wardens have that whole power restoration gambit, dark before the dawn, something like that, uh, and they'll just use that. So the other part of my whole strategy is to put damage on them, so that they have to worry about a couple different factors at once. they got to balance doing damage gambits, healing gambits, and going for that dark before the dawn power restore. I want to put them into a situation where they have to choose which ones they're doing, constantly hit off gambits, especially while under the influence of that banner of terror, so that they use up a lot of their power, they're not getting the regen as fast, and so that they're forced to do stuff other than hit that power regen gambit in order to stay alive. As you can see, it can be pretty effective. I've taken a lot of his morale off. I think I actually... Yeah, I did have him down a bit lower just uh, a little while ago. Uh, he's gone back up. I think he hit a power potion, so that uh, hasn't worked out fully yet, but I don't expect it to, to be an instantaneous success. Also, the Banner of Terror is going to be running out pretty soon. No, there went the power potion. And so that's just how it's going to be. Actually, no, he might not have gotten down the... No, yeah, I think I already had him down to 4,000. Still, very low. Uh, I'm doing a decent job of keeping pressure on him. And that's that's at least causing him a little bit of pro problem. Uh, that's at least causing him some problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm tripping over my tongue. Now, uh, there we go. 4,000 now. But uh, he does have a lot of power, so he is going to be able to get over this. Uh, especially because I'm not going to be able to keep him stunned forever. And although the stuns are decent, uh, I just don't hit hard enough to blow through him the way I need to. 
also the other thing is that I'm starting to run low on power myself. So pretty soon here I'm going to have to go into a more conservative style and get into commander stance and turtle up. Now I'm still going to be working on trying to keep some pressure on him so that he's got to choose between his damage gambits, his power restore gambits, and his morale building gambits. But it's just not going to be to the same extent that it was. The other thing that I'm doing, now there we go, commander stance right there, is I'm g being careful to go ahead and hit my green potions every chance that I can to take off those damage over time abilities that wardens put on you. Uh, you've pretty much always been able to take those off with the green potions which cure cry effects. Uh, I'm not taking off that one right there, but I'm saving it for some reason. But uh, that can be very, very handy just because it does remove a decent amount of damage. Uh, it keeps them from tearing up to a, a much higher version, and uh, you know, generally it's just good policy to do. Uh, also, Wardens do have the potential to put a incoming healing debuff onto war leaders and other targets and stuff. I haven't had to fight against that yet. I just don't see Wardens really using that set, that, at least not the ones that I run into solo. Against that, I'm really not too worried. I tend to th I, th I think that one of two things is going to happen. Number one, I think that Commander Stance might be effective if you're in it early enough that you can still tank through the whole thing. And the other thing is, I think that it might be a effect that is curable with those green pots, or possibly even with the tactical one. So if it's an effect that I can remove, and I just am aware of it on my status bar, then I'm not really going to have a problem. Here we go, we are both uh, very low on power here, uh, both decently high on morale, so this is going to just be a little bit of dancing around, doing auto attacks for the time being, while we uh, wait for power potions to come off cooldown, which uh, his came off cooldown first. So now he's going to be going for damage, and uh, I'm going to have to go ahead and get back into commander stance. Why did I get into brawlers? Uh, that was a bit of a mistake, of a mistake right there, but I do need to get back to commanders, there we go, and uh, go back to, to turtling up. Which, as you can see, even with very low power, uh, just by keeping solid movement up and all that, you can still be pretty effective as a turtling war leader. Now, I do have the command post down for the power regen and for the damage boost, and if things get even dicier, then I could potentially switch over to <coughs> my point defense banner to make myself an even tougher target to take down, which is another thing that I would do if I had to face off against the incoming heal debuff is I would go ahead and get that, that point defense down, uh, possibly even drop into defensive aura, and then, just like I mentioned before, I would go ahead and turtle up, hold, the, hold up as tight as I can, let that warden attack, 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 just stand there and do my healing as best as I can, and use that banner of terror to sap their power, let them run out trying to kill me, would be how I would actually fight against that. Now, against Sin 3 here, uh, the one thing that he's doing very, very well is he's doing a very good job of making sure that he keeps his power potion use. He saves them for just the right time. He also uses it at the whenever it comes up, at roughly, uh, once he's got his timing down. But uh, whenever he gets really low on his power bar, that tends to be when his power potion actually comes off cooldown. So it keeps him from getting too far into a situation where he really ends up uh, within easy burst range for me to potentially finish him off. And so this fight is going to end in a stalemate. But uh, you can still see some of the, the actual tactics and stuff that can go on. And uh, another thing to note is that if a warden isn't prepared, fully stocked up on their potions or anything, or if they mess up their potion use, uh, they don't hit it when they need to, they hit it too early or something, or they just aren't disciplined with which gambits they're using, you can still do quite a bit to them. Uh, another great advantage that I have is I do have that Banner of Horror, which lets me hit even harder, put more damage on him, uh, puts it in a, in a slightly more dangerous position. Uh, he went ahead, he just hit both his potions right there, gave him a nice infusion of morale and power, so he didn't get very far down and into a, a dangerous position there, right there, where he could have potentially uh, fallen victim if I had gotten a couple crits with Shield Bash and some of my shouts to, to end up nearly dead. There I go with my power potion, so now I'm just going to have to hold tight and wait for <laughs> cooldowns again while I just keep going. Now, uh, one thing about trying to run them out of power is that Shield Bash is not always the best skill to use. 
just because it does mean that the warden sits there not firing off skills and while they're not firing off skills they're just regenerating power so you want to weigh that in another thing to, to weigh in is that occasionally you will cause yourself problems just because <clears throat> one shield bash takes a lot of power uh, but two you're gonna build up diminishing returns and it can be better to have the diminishing return timer reset so that you've got a longer duration stun when you need it. So uh, those are just a couple words of advice. Uh, that said, Shield Bash is great for when you need some burst damage because of that whole crit mechanic. Uh, it also hits very hard. Uh, with R of Command, <coughs> and uh, you know, as long as you've got the uh, Shield Mastery traded as well, uh, Shield Bash is your second hardest hitting skill. Uh, if you've got some of the other traits slotted in, uh, most notably Empowering, then Black Speech is going to still be your hardest by fair margin. Uh, but with the build that I have, I've noticed that the uh, Outpost buffs, they really determine which skill is going to be hitting harder. Uh, if I've only got two or one or zero Outposts, then I find that Shield Bash is my hardest hitting skill, actually out-damaging Black Speech on a crit. But as I get more Outpost buffs, then Black Speech goes back up to being the top skill and uh, doing the most damage. Alright, getting low on power here once again, and uh, so I should be going back over to Commander's Stance, although I could stay in Baller's Stance just for some extra damage, just keep it a little tighter on the, the power consumption, uh, or, or be more disciplined on power consumption rather, and you know, let him Take, go through some more of my morale, especially because I've got my big cooldowns ready to go. Uh, in particular, the quitters never win, and uh, just let him run out his power that way. So uh, you, know, you can use your your morale as a <coughs> as a uh, mechanic for getting rid of their power, uh, just by letting them s go further into your bar and giving you plenty of space for that nice big quitters morale infusion and even space for if it gets a nice big crit. But uh, right now he is going for a lot of damage. Not really going for the Dark Before the Dawn from what I can see. Uh, he might have hit it off just there. Uh, but I'm getting him fairly low on mo <clears throat> his morale there. I went ahead and hit my quitters. Uh, that was mostly to get the power from it. So uh, now I am going to try to burst him. Unfortunately he just got uh, a nice big boost. I think that was his morale potion. His power potion would be very shortly behind if that's the case. He is going to be going for those... Uh, Hell, life leech, well, morale leech gambits, rather, and trying to stay alive here. And he has enough power that he's going to be able to do it. So I really needed to to wait a little bit more, get let him go further down his power bar before go, starting the burst. But, uh, well, this is still a, a strategy I'm working out and practicing, and this is my first uh, real attempt using it in this particular video. So there's plenty of room for refinement. And uh, back to Commander Stance I go. There went his power potion once again. So, uh, yeah, this is a, a fight that's not going to go anywhere. Uh, I think that fairly soon here I'm going to realize that I will rename my banner and we'll call a draw. Or uh, it might be that I stop attacking. Either way, we're going to end up just calling it a draw and stopping. Uh, potentially, we could go at it until we run out of power potions, and that would definitely decide the fight. Uh, because of the double stack that I'm carrying, and I, I did switch over to using my better power potions there, I, it's likely that I would actually win that, because I did come into this fight with about 100 power potions. But with two minutes of cooldown per power potion, no one wants to sit through the fight that long. Uh, really. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Renaming the banner. Here we go. Exercise in Futility. Hope some of you appreciate my naming. <laughs> Alright, I should turn off my auto attacks here shortly as well, and uh, or you should see that, that the banner's name has changed. Ah, he might just be going for one final burst at it. Uh, right now he's really low on power. The thing is that Unfortunately, his power potion will be coming off cooldown again, and he's got too much morale for me to burst down. And also, I have decided to just call it quits, and I don't have the power pool I need to actually go go after him effectively. Uh, so, going after the wardens, that it, it's a balancing act between how much pressure you put on them 
and also keeping your power bar full enough to have the power you need to finish them when it comes time for that, that burst at the end when they get low. So it's going to take more practice. I think it is very much doable and very possible to go after wardens like that. And uh, well, having seen just how effective it is to turtle with command post and aura of command in commander stance, I can't really see any major issues with trying to, to turtle up against a warden with the point defense and the defensive arc uh, up against the, the ones where that have the incoming healing debuff. Anyway, uh, that is all for this time. I'm gonna have more stuff go up, coming out and hopefully get more diverse fights as it, things go forward. Uh, as I said though, the guys that are out there are mostly on the powerful classes right now, and especially because the Freep side, uh, most of them feel like they're underpowered and outmatched and all that kind of stuff. This is actually really similar to how they felt in, at Mirkwood in the beginning stages, until really uh, free-to-play and uh, the update right after free-to-play. What was that? That was uh, Echoes of the Dead, uh, Allies of the King, one of those ones. When, when Guardians really got powerful and so did Burglars and the Unmitigated Bleeds, until that stage of Mirkwood, uh, all the stuff before that, the Freeps kept talking about how they were underpowered and so many creeps and blah 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 I mean, year five of Lotro is just like year three again. It's just coming back around. Personally, I think we've achieved greater balance. A lot of other people seem to agree with that, uh, especially Raid versus Raid. <laughs> if we can get more solo stuff worked out and things, especially because Outpost plays such a huge role in, in the way that solo fights go, then uh, I think that we're going to see really great stuff. Anyway, that's all for this time. Good luck and have fun out there. Ugmog is out.